Section 4 of Beowulf. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Tad E. Beowulf by Unknown. Translated by Francis Barton Gamer. 9. Me thus often the evil monsters thronging threatened. With thrust of my sword, the darling, I dealt them due return. No wise had they bliss from their booty then to devour their victim, vengeful creatures, seated to banquet at bottom of sea, but at break of day, by the brand sore hurt, on the edge of ocean up they lay, put to sleep by the sword, and since by them on the fathomless sea ways sailor folk are never molested. Light from east came bright God's beacon, the billows sank, so that I saw the sea cliffs high windy walls, for word oft saveth Earl undoomed if he doughty be. And so it came that I killed with my sword nine of the knickers, of night-fought battles, near heard I a harder neath heaven's dome, nor adrift on the deep a more desolate man. Yet I came unharmed from that hostile clutch, though spent with swimming, the sea upbore me, flood of the tide of Finnish land, the welling waters, no wise of thee have I heard men tell such terror of falchions, bitter battle. Brecca ne'er yet, not one of you pair, in the play of war such daring deed has done it all with bloody brand, I boast not of it. Though thou wast the bane of thy brethren dear, thy closest kin whence curse of hell awaits thee, well as thy wit may serve. For I say in sooth, thou son of Ecglaf, never had Grendel these grim deeds wrought, monster dire, on thy master dear, and Heo wrought such havoc, if heart of thine were as battle-bold as thy boast is loud. But he has found no feud will happen. From sword-clash dread of your Danish clan, he vaunts him safe from the victor's shieldings. He forces pledges, favors none of the land of Danes, but lustily murders, fights and feasts nor feud he dreads from spear-dane men but speedily now shall i prove him prowess and pride of the gaiots shall bid him battle blithe to mead go he that listeneth when light of dawn this morrow morning o'er men of etherrobe's son from the south shall beam joyous then was the jewel-giver hoar-haired war-brave help awaited the bright dane's prince from beowulf hearing Folk's good shepherd, such firm resolve. Then was laughter of liegemen, loud resounding with winsome words. Came Walsh Theo forth, queen of Hrothgar, heedful of courtesy, gold-decked, greeting the guests in hall. And the high-born lady handed the cup, first to the East Danes, heir and warden, bade him be blithe at the beer carouse the land's beloved one. Lustily took he banquet and beaker, battle-famed king. Through the hall then went the Helming's lady, two younger and older everywhere carried the cup, till come the moment when the ring-graced queen, the royal-hearted, to Beowulf bore the beaker of mead. She greeted the Gaiot's lord, God, she thanked, in wisdom words, that her will was granted, that at last on a hero her hope could lean, for comfort and terrors. The cup he took, hardy in war, from Walsh Theo's hand, and answer uttered the eager for combat. Beowulf spake, bairn of edge Theo. This was my thought when my thanes and I bent to the ocean and entered our boat, that I would work the will of your people fully, or fighting fall in death, and fiends gripe fast. I am firm to do an earl's brave deed, or end the days of this life of mine in the mead hall here. Well, these words to the woman seemed Beowulf's battle boast. Bright with gold, the stately dame by her spouse sat down, Again, as erst began in hall, warriors with sail and words of power, the proud bands revel, till presently the son of Helaf de Nu hastened to seek rest for the night. He knew their waited fight for the fiend in that festal hall, when the sheen of the sun they saw no more, and dusk of night sank darkling nigh, and shadowy shapes came striding on, wan under welkin. The warriors rose, man to man he made harang, Hrothgar to Beowulf, bade him hail, let him wield the wine-hall, a word he added, Never to any man erst I trusted, 
since I could heave up hand and shield this noble Dane hall till now to thee. Have now and hold this house unpeered. Remember thy glory, thy might declare. Watch for the foe, no wish shall fail thee, if thou bidest the battle with bold won life. 10. Then Hrothgar went with his hero train, defense of shieldings forth from hall. Fain would the warlord Walsh Theo seek, couch of his queen, the king of glory, against this Grendel a guard had set. So heroes heard a hall defender, who warded the monarch and watched for the monster. In truth, the Gaiot's prince gladly trusted his metal, his might, the mercy of God. Cast off then his corslet of iron helmet from head to his henchman gave, choicest of weapons, the well-chased sword, bidding him guard the gear of battle. Spake then his vaunt the valiant man, Beowulf Gaiot, ere the bed he sought, of force in fight no feebler I count me, in grim war deeds than Grendel deems him. Not with the sword, then, to sleep of death, his life will I give, though it lie in my power. No skill is his to strike against me, my shield to hew, though he hardy be, bold in battle, we both this night shall spurn the sword. If he seek me here, unweaponed for war, like wisest God, sacred Lord, on which side soever doom decree, as he deemeth right. Reclined, then, the chieftain, and cheek pillows held the head of the earl while all about him seamen hardy on hall beds sank none of them thought that thence their steps to the falcon fastness that fostered them to the land they loved would lead them back full well they wist that on warriors many battle death seized in the banquet hall of danish clan but comfort and help war wheel weaving to wetter folk the master gave that by might of one over their enemy all prevailed by single strength in sooth tis told that highest god or humankind hath wielded ever thro' one night striding came the walker in shadow warriors slept whose hest was to guard the gabled hall all save one twas widely known that against god's will the ghostly ravager him could not hurl to haunts of darkness Wakeful, ready, with warrior's wrath, Bold, he bided the battle's issue. 11. Then the moorland, by misty crags, With God's wrath laden, Grendel came. The monster was minded of mankind now, Sundry to seize in the stately house. Under Welkin he walked, Till the wine-place there, gold hall of men, He gladly discerned, flashing with fretwork. Not first time this, that he the home of Hrothgar sought, Yet ne'er in his life-day, late or early, Such hardy heroes, such hall-thanes found. To the house the warrior walked apace, Parted from peace, the portal opened, Though with forge bolts fast, when his fists had struck it, And baleful he burst in his blatant rage the house's mouth. All hastily then, o'er fair-proved floor, The fiend trod on. Ireful he strode, there streamed from his eyes Fearful flashes like flame to see. He spied in hall the hero band, kin and clansmen clustered asleep, hardy liegemen. Then laughed his heart, for the monster was minded, ere morn should dawn, savage, to sever the soul of each, life from body, since lusty banquet waited his will. But word forbade him to seize any more of men of earth after that evening. Eagerly watched he a lock's kinsman, his cursed foe, how he would fare in fell attack, now that the monster was minded to pause, straightway he seized a sleeping warrior for the first, and tore him fiercely asunder. The bone frame bit, drank blood in streams, swallowed him piecemeal. Swiftly thus, the lifeless course was clear devoured, eaten feet and hands. Then farther he hied, for the hardy hero with hand he grasped, felt for the foe with fiendish claw, for the hero reclining, who clutched it boldly, prompt to answer propped on his arm soon they saw that shepherd of evils that never he met in this middle world in the ways of earth another wit with heavier hand gripe at heart he feared sorrowed in soul none the sooner escaped fain would he flee his fastness seek the den of devils no doings now such as oft he had done in days of old 
Then bethought him the hardy he locked thane of his boast at evening. Up he bounded, grass firm his foe, whose fingers cracked. The fiend made off, but the earl close followed. The monster meant, if he might at all, to fling himself free, and far away fly to the fens, knew his fingers' power in the gripe of the grim one. Gruesome march to Hayarot this monster of harm had made. Din filled the room, the Danes were bereft, castle dwellers and clansmen all, earls of their ale. Angry were both those savage hall guards, the house resounded. Wonder it was the wine hall, firm in the strain of their struggle, stood. To earth the fair house fell not, too fast it was within and without by its iron bands craftily clamped. Though there crashed from sill, many a mead bench, men have told me, gay with gold, where the grim foes wrestled. So well had weaned this wisest shielding that not ever at all might any man that bone-decked brave house break asunder, crushed by craft, unless clasp of fire and smoke engulfed it. Again uprose, den redoubled. Danes of the north with fear and frenzy were filled, each one, who from the wall that wailing heard, God's foe sounding his grisly song, cry of the conquered, clamorous pain from captive of hell. Too closely held him he who of men and might was strongest in that same day of this our life. End of section four.